Hi everyone, Yasas Kekalos Tirtate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're going to be making chocolate flavored kokakia. Kokakia are little sponge cake cream puffs. They're so good. Traditionally, they're made vanilla flavored, and I did share my recipe for that dessert about a year ago, maybe a few months ago, I don't remember. They're so good. I used the same base recipe, except I made everything chocolate flavored. This recipe was requested on my Instagram stories. You guys asked for it. I honestly had never had it before. I've never even seen it. So I recipe tested and I created my version at home and it is going to be better than anyone that you've had at a bakery. I guarantee you that. They're moist, they're light, and they're so juicy and delicious. Beautiful to look at. They're so dainty and elegant. Perfect with a nice cup of coffee. Let's get started. So we're going to begin by making the simple syrup. Sponge cake tends to be a little dry, so it does need some sweetness and moisture. In a small saucepan, you're going to add one cup of granulated sugar, one cup of water, and the juice of half a lemon. You can use an orange instead if you prefer. Mix that all up and bring it to a boil. Once the sugar has dissolved, take it off of the heat and stir in a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Set it aside to cool completely. And now we're gonna move on to making the sponge cakes. Before we actually make the batter for the sponge cakes, we're gonna prepare the baking pan and the parchment paper. So you're going to need three baking pans lined with parchment paper. And I like to line them out first, draw out some circles. I have a two inch round cookie cutter. You can use a cup, whatever's two inches in diameter is going to work. Use a pen or a pencil and trace out little circles. Make sure to space them a good distance apart, maybe like two fingers, because the batter, it does rise and sometimes it can spread too. And it has happened to me when I was recipe testing that they all stuck together. <laughs> then you're not gonna have kokakia. It's better to use three trays instead of two and just space them out the way I'm doing. Don't do more than three or four per row and no more than five rows if you have the same baking tray that I have. Make sure that you flip it over, otherwise this ink will transfer onto your little cakes and you don't want that. Continue doing that with the other two baking trays and then we're gonna make the sponge cakes. Now it's time to make the sponge cakes. Make sure that your oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit because this moves fairly quickly. I've separated six eggs that have the egg whites in my mixing bowl here and I have the egg yolks here waiting. We're gonna mix those up after. Begin with the egg whites so that way you don't have to wash your whisk again. Once you get any kind of fat in your egg whites, they're not gonna whisk up into a meringue. So beat the egg whites first until they're nice and frothy for a couple of seconds. Then go ahead and add some of the sugar. I have one and a quarter cups of granulated sugar here. I'm only gonna add about less than half of it to my whites. The rest is gonna be saved for the egg yolks. So add about half of it to the whites and then beat them on high speed until a stiff meringue is formed. That's gonna take about three or four minutes. So my egg whites are ready. I'm just gonna transfer them to this mixing bowl over here so that way we can uh, prepare the rest of the ingredients. Look at that, look at how shiny that is. Okay, we're gonna use the same whisk and the same bowl. If you were gonna start off by mixing up the egg yolks, you would have to wash everything and then do the egg whites. That's why we would begin with the egg whites. So I'm gonna add the six yolks to the mixing bowl along with the remaining sugar, about two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, I always go a little heavier with vanilla, it's such a nice flavor. One teaspoon of either instant coffee powder or instant espresso powder. It really deepens the flavor of the chocolate. You won't even taste the coffee, you won't even know it's there. Two tablespoons of a light olive oil or your favorite vegetable oil, that's very light in flavor. And then we're just gonna beat this on high speed until it's thick and pale for about two minutes. Before we do that, let me tell you about the dry ingredients. In my little bowl over here, I have one and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour. I have a quarter of a cup of cornstarch, a quarter of a cup of cocoa powder that's unsweetened, two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna whisk that all together. So now they're ready. Okay, so now we're just gonna lighten up the mixture with about a third of these egg whites. And then go ahead and add the flour while the mixer is beating on low, a little bit at a time.
And before it's all mixed, add the remaining egg whites so that way everything is incorporated and the mixture stays nice and light. You last thing you want to do is overbeat the mixture once the flour is added because then they're not going to be as light as they could be. Once it looks like it's pretty much almost mixed, then stop the mixer and take the beater off and just go in with your hand using the whisk and just whisk everything all together so that way anything that's stuck to the bottom gets incorporated and everything is going to be nice and smooth. You know it's ready once all the white streaks are gone. Just take care not to overbeat this or overmix it. You could also use your spatula for the last few turns and that's it. Once the batter looks like this, it's ready. It almost looks like whipped cream or buttercream. So now I have a pastry bag here. I like to buy these reusable pastry bags from Amazon. I will put the link in the blog post so that way you can get one if you don't have one. I just cut a little bit of the tip off so that way it's round. If you don't have one of these, you could use a Ziploc bag. These are just much easier to work with. So all you have to do is fill the bag up halfway, not more than that. Otherwise it's going to be hard to handle. And I like to put it in a large glass or a jar or something like that. So that way the bag is very easy to fill. And then I'll remind you one more time to make sure that the parchment paper is face side down. You don't want the ink part to be touching your cakes. And then just pipe out little rounds. You want them to be about a quarter inch high. Keep in mind they are going to spread a little and they are going to rise a little bit. So leave sufficient space in between. And once the first batch is done, you could put it in the oven. They're going to bake for about 10 to 12 minutes. Once they're done, take them out and put the next tray in. I'm going to put these in the oven and I'm going to continue piping my little cakes out onto the trays and then we're going to move on to the next step. So my oven cooks these little cakes in about 10 to 11 minutes. I never like to overbake these, otherwise they dry out. So once they come out of the oven, let them sit at room temperature for about five, 10 minutes. And then if you have an offset spatula used for uh, decorating um, icing on cakes or putting icing on cakes, it's a good tool to use to help lift these off. Otherwise a regular spatula will work. If you carefully slide it under a few of these at a time, it'll lift them up, flip them over because then we're going to brush them with simple syrup. But before we do that, we're going to make the chocolate ganache that we're going to use for dipping the tops of these. I'm making a double batch. There's going to be lots left over, but I'd rather have more than less. And you could use this chocolate ganache to put in your coffee, to make like a mocha. You can put it, you can make little rolls with phyllo with the with the chocolate and the nuts in them. There's so many things you could do. Once it cools, you can make little chocolate truffles and roll them in nuts or sprinkles. The options are endless. Chocolate ganache will not go to waste. It lasts weeks in the refrigerator. To make the ganache, you're gonna need 12 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. I also like to add a little bit of coffee to this as well. A teaspoon of instant coffee, half, to, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon, you can put as much as you like in there. It really makes it very chocolatey. A teaspoon or two of vegetable oil to help it stay nice and shiny and a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Bring one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream to a boil and add it to the chocolate. Mix it all up. Once the chocolate sits and it starts to soften, it'll be much easier to mix up. If it's still a little bit on the cooler side, you can pop it in the microwave for about 15 seconds and then whisk it all up until the chocolate is melted and the ganache is beautiful and shiny. Set it aside and then it's time to make the whipped cream. So traditionally a pastry cream is put in between these. That is a lot of work. I think whipped cream tastes much better in this recipe and we're going to make it chocolate flavored using the ganache. So in the bowl of my tabletop mixer that's been fitted with the whisk attachment, I'm going to add one full cup of heavy whipping cream. I'm actually going to add a little bit more because I want to have a little tiny bit left over or just the right amount. And then I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of confectioner sugar, one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. You could add another teaspoon if you want. And then whisk that all up until, until it starts to thicken. Once it thickens, I like to add four tablespoons, heaping tablespoons of that ganache that's cooled down a little bit. And then whisk that on high speed until a whipped cream is formed. You want it to be nice and thick and taste it. And then at this point, if you want to add more chocolate or more confectioner sugar, you can. Now it's time to put, it, put them all together. So I added a star tip attachment to my pastry bag. And then I just put all of the whipped cream in here. It's going to sit in this tall glass so that way it doesn't start to seep out. We're going to start by putting some syrup on these so we can get them nice and moist.
Next, go ahead and pipe some whipped cream on the round. You don't want to do it on all of them because half of them are the bottom and half of them are the tops. And then you're going to take the tops and you're going to dip them in the ganache and place them on top of the whipped cream. And you're going to see that you're going to have some bigger ones and some smaller ones. Just kind of match them up as best as you can. Now at this point, I like to also roll them in some chocolate sprinkles, but you're going to, in order to do that, you have to let them set a little bit. So I like to put them in the freezer for about 15 or 20 minutes. The good thing about this is you can make these ahead of time, even a month ahead of time. Make these, freeze them. Once they're frozen solid, wrap them carefully with some plastic wrap. It's best to put them in a tray or in a container, leave the parchment paper underneath because they do get a little bit sticky. Once they're set, then it's time to roll them into the sprinkles. Now, in order for the sprinkles to stick to them, they cannot be frozen solid. There still has to be a little bit of stickiness to the cake and to the filling and to the ganache. So just let them thaw out on the counter for about five minutes before you roll them in the sprinkles and go ahead and roll them in the sprinkles. A bakery tip to give it a little bit of a professional look. It is more work and I wouldn't do it if I'm making it at home. But if you want to take the extra step, you can take that leftover ganache and just ice the sides of the cakes and then roll them into the sprinkles and they're going to be fully covered with sprinkles on the side. It's up to you. This is already a lot of work, I know, but it's totally worth it because just take a look at how beautiful they are. Once they're done, as many as you're going to be serving, put them on a serving tray or a serving platter and they're best served and either nice and cool or, or slightly at room temperature. I like it when the inside is a little bit cool, but the longer they sit at room temperature, the juicier and moister they get. It is time for the taste test. And of course, I wouldn't use a knife uh, to cut through this. I would just pick one up and bite it, but just <laughs> to be a little bit neater for the video. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Gata plictico, which means perfect. So delicious. The cake is super juicy and moist. That filling is light and airy and just the perfect amount of chocolate. The cake, like I said, is nice and moist and light and that ganache on top is rich and dense. Sprinkles give a little bit of a crunch. I love it. I think they are so delicious. You're going to love these. Like I said, these are a little bit more advanced, but if you follow all the steps, I know that you can do it. One main, main tip that I want you guys to pay attention to is when you're piping these out, leave more room than you think in between them. So when you draw the circles in the beginning, if you have to use more trays, use more trays. It is not worth it to go through all of these steps and then have them all stick together on you in the oven. They spread and they rise a little bit, so keep that in mind. Let me know how yours turn out. Share pictures with me on Facebook and on Instagram. I love to see them. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. If you want to print out this recipe, it's on the website, dimitrosdishes.com. If you want to learn how to make the vanilla version, click over here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, us.